The rappers that have begun significant fight in 2024 are already rather busy. Over the weekend, Bia and Cardi B entered the fray. Welcome back it's your host Nancy Brown. If you are new here make sure you have subscribed to our YouTube channel. In the first half of the year alone, Megan Thee Stallion, Nicki Minaj, Kendrick Lamar, Drake, J. Cole, Metro Boomin, Quavo, and Chris Brown have all experienced moments of viral fame. The relationship officially began over the weekend when Cardi collaborated with Megan Thee Stallion and Glorilla on the Wannabe remix, despite reports that the two had previously made subtle jabs at one another. She delivered a shot that was impossible to misread during her poem. The name of that diss record should have been not like that, because that is not how you diss somebody in the rapper. <laughs> Since then, prominent figures in the rap industry, such as Charlemagne the God, have dissected every advancement. Bia was the next to tumble, and they answered on Twitter. She posted a few of Offset's lyrics that were altered to make political statements about Cardi's husband. Since last December, Cardi and Offset have experienced tumultuous months in their relationship. Shortly after, the full-on diss tune Sumi was released. Contrary to popular belief, which held that Cardi's infidelity was the main source of their relationship problems, the song accused Cardi of cheating on Offset. Cardi took the song's title literally and did, albeit somewhat playfully, threatened to sue Bia for the song. And when you make a diss record, you can't make something so terrible that you end up dissing yourself. The Breakfast Club Drew and Charlemagne have now discussed their opinions of the new diss tune. The hosts of The Breakfast Club were harsh in their criticism of the diss track. It, it was it was ass, you know what I'm saying? I just don't think Bia is that type of rapper. They made note of the fact that she was unable to adequately bash Cardi. They even went so far as to suggest that with the new song, Bia might have dissed herself more than Cardi. It wasn't giving? It wasn't giving to me. Yes. It wasn't. Shout, Shout out, Cardi. Stay away from these dirty ass niggas. High Senate is being defended by Charlemagne the God, who advises him to avoid old school journalists who are against his success. These hip-hop fucking old-school journalists who don't really want to see you succeed. On an installment of his Brilliant Idiots podcast featuring Andrew Schultz, he discussed his thoughts on the contentious live streamer. You ain't never even claimed to be a journalist. That's why people get, I saw somebody. From there, he explained that one of his friends recently got mad because Senate didn't know the title of Jay-Z's first album. The name of Jay-Z's first album is older than Kai Sinat. Charlemagne remarked. Reasonable doubt is 26, Kai is 23. Two. It is not the first time that Charlemagne has defended Senet. The host of Breakfast Club also applauded the streamer after Elliot Wilson chastised him earlier in the year. You think it's over for uh, Kanye? Over in what sense? Being contentious is nothing new for Kanye West. West has been widely criticized and has lost multiple business connections as a result of his frequent public remarks since 2022 that were interpreted as anti-Semitic. Prior to that, his support of Donald Trump and the MAGA movement made him unpopular with a lot of rappers and rap fans. Yeah. Well, that, well, that's what happened, well, that's because nobody cares about Kanye rapping. Charlemagne the God, however, claims that the backlash has finally reached a stage where people don't even give a damn about the music underneath. Kanye would have done this 10 years ago. It's like, oh shit, Kanye inserted himself into beef. Charlemagne talked specifically about West's involvement involvement in the year's greatest rap feud. There were other parties involved in the beef, even though Kendrick Lamar and Drake dominated the show. J. Cole, Metro Boomin, Rick Ross, Future, and even The Weeknd were among those who made a contribution of some kind. Why give a fuck about Kanye rapping in 2024? Though many don't even seem to remember, Kanye West also attempted to join the feud. He brought up incidents where he says he washed both Drake and Kendrick on Instagram and Twitter. He also showed a special interest in going after J. Cole. However, Charlemagne claims that interest in West's engagement has waned. Especially when the guys that are rapping are the rappers that we yeah. actually want to hear from. Charlemagne has never by shy about expressing his opinion and that was the same with his comments on Kanye in 2024. Regarding the beef that has been on rap fans' minds all year, Charlemagne has been rather vocal. He even sketched up a scenario in which he believes Drake still has a chance to win. Family Matters is probably the best record, Not Like Us is the best song. With the apparent end of the Kendrick Lamar and Drake feud, everyone is weighing in on who they believe prevailed, and whose material was superior. Naturally, a lot of people are making a distinction between two categories on that last point, which was the better song overall, and which was the better diss track. Andrew Schultz, Charlemagne the God, and others discussed this topic and offered some thought-provoking justifications for their opinions on a winner. Yeah, Not Like Us is the best Family song. Family Matters the best diss track. Yeah. And yeah. Not Like Us is the best bot. Regardless of your opinion of the co-host of The Breakfast Club, there's no denying that this is an extremely difficult race. So Drake got the best diss track, but he didn't win. No, he lost because of strategy. Yeah. I don't know if I really count like that or first-person shooter. I don't know why y'all got 7-minute drivel by J. Cole even up there. I don't know why y'all got show of hands up there with Future. Asap Rocky and Metro Boomin. I don't know why y'all got all to myself with Future. The Weeknd and Metro Boomin. We're talking about Kendrick Lamar and Aubrey Graham. That's what we talking about. So, if anything, I would keep like that. No, it doesn't seven minute drivel doesn't exist anymore. I would keep like that and then push-ups. Then I would go into tailor-made freestyle. 
Then I would go into Euphoria, 616 in LA, Family Matters. Recently, there has been a desire for people to hear from Joe Budden. All things considered, this is a result of the ongoing fight between Drake and Kendrick Lamar. Budden has emerged as one of the most adored cultural critics. Even though he might be irritating at times, listening to him express his opinions is always amusing. Fans are especially interested in learning about his opinions on the Kendrick Lamar fight because he has previously been a harsh critic of Drake. Following Kendrick's release of Not Like Us on SETI, Budden joined DJ Academics on a live stream. He asserted that Drizzy was currently losing at this point. Although Drake did not give us a timestamp record, he thought that it was vital. Rather, he delivered what felt like a capitulation with the heart part 6. The most recent episode of the Joe Budden podcast had a discussion of the beef and an admission of how much Joe enjoys Not Like Us. <laughs> He even made fun of Ish, who seems to be supporting Drake, by using the song. Ish remained sitting on the couch next to Ice, but everyone else got up and started dancing as soon as Joe turned on the song. It was an amusing moment that proves Kendrick may have the greatest song of them all. Some claim that Not Like Us is a part of Family Matters, but it's really getting people out of their chairs. It only proves that Kendrick is a hitmaker, despite the false accusations of others that his songs are uninteresting. That's it for today, thanks for watching. Tell us what you think in the comments section and most importantly subscribe. See you.